So now what we're going to do is we're going to reverse, we're going to take it out and turn it 90 degrees into the jam chuck and cut that groove in it. Did you set the two lines? Yeah, I've got, I've, got them, I've got them set back to where they're now matching back up there again. Um, so you can take the tape off of that one. So that's one that has been hollowed, uh, reversed it, cut the groove, which is what I'm going to do next. So these steps are where it's nice to have a tight fitting lid, but you don't want it too tight because it's, it's so hard to get it separated back again. This is one where I really don't want to go any farther than I have to. So I want to make sure I stop and see where I am right here, right dead center, because uh, I don't want to cut any deeper than that because now we have the walls of the box to worry about. This is also where using that template to judge your depth is important because, and the inside shape because if you went too far to any one of the sides, when we make it into a sphere, we could cut into the sides there. So that's where that thing comes in. And we're right there now. So I'm just right on that side. I'm not quite to it here, but that's okay. That'll all kind of come out when we round it off. Make my pencil colorization in here. Depends on the day. Um, if it is a big turning day, uh, 10 hours. If I'm in bowl production mode, those are 10 hour days. Um, if it's uh, November, 10 hours a day, because I've got a Christmas show that I'm getting ready for, and I'm just nonstop at, at that point in time because I'm usually behind by that time. I'm way behind for the year. Um, That's the Christmas show in Austin. Yeah. What's the name of that? It's called the Armadillo Christmas Bazaar. And so, yeah, I, I usually get to about to October, and I go, oh, my gosh, how much time do I have left? <laughs> and uh, um, 200, something like that. My, my normal production run for a year is around 200. Um, and most of those get sold at Christmas. So, yeah, that's a... And I haven't started for this year yet. I'm way behind. So um, I've, got a, I've got a lot of work to do. That's, that's, but I've had four gigs in these last three months to deal with. I've got another one next month. And I go up... In two weeks, I go up to the... Uh, um, no, in two weeks I do the North Dakota Wood Turning Symposium, so I've got to get back into the mode of running a couple of those demos again. All right, so now we are back um, uh, to where we're in our original configuration, and all we're going to do is smooth out the sphere. Um, normally what I would do with this is I would do one half of it, then I would spin it around and do the other half. But when I do the box, because the center 
is known all the time. I mean, there's always going to be a line there because we parted it off. I don't have to worry about getting rid of the pencil line. It's always going to be there. So I will actually smooth off three quarters of the box in this way, you know, in this orientation because it's clamped into the chuck. It's the easiest way to do it rather than worry about jam, jam fitting it in uh, into the jam chuck. And what I'll do, so I'll do three quarters of it, then I'll spin it around in the jam chuck and do the last quarter of the, of the sphere uh, when it's in the jam chuck. So right now what I do with these guys is I keep this tailstock up while I smooth all this off, and then when I clear off that last little bit at the top, which I might still do now, um, I'll tape it to hold it in place. But right now, the tailstock is ha actually holding it all together. And I know this, this, uh, uh, this joint is pretty tight. Um, as I cut into this, I saw I was really, really off, so I'm going to have to clear away a lot of material. I'm going to do that with the bowl gouge. We go back to the boring part. Uh, you could probably use a square one. Don't use a round one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, that's just another scraper. I'm not certain it would do it as clean as a, as a negative rake scraper would. It would probably work on mesquite. I'm not certain it's going to work on a softwood. The, the negative rake scraper is going to work far better on the softwood than I think the easy wood tool is. Since the easy wood tool is not a negative rake scraper. You'd have to try it and see what your results were with it. I mean, they're super sharp. You know, if, you, if they're still on a sharp edge, mesquite, they're probably going to work fine. In fact, I'm going to do one sharp pass on this quick. And See how tight my joint is? Yeah, I don't know if that's going to hold. Still looks like it's good, but I could snap it right off right here real easy. You guys want to see some danger anyway, don't you? Well, the tool rest is too high. This, the scraping needs to be done basically right at center. Yeah, the lid's pretty tight. This should be, I, I should put tape on this. Ah, oh, good. It's, it's much easier for me to have it rounded from the end and, and going around than it is um, to leave that bit on the end. Um, but when I get to this, because that's still a, I still don't want that to fall off there. What I do is I put a piece of leather between the tailstock and the ball so I don't mar it with the tailstock so I can come back and do some more on it. Yeah. I've got a little bit more in here to get. That leather might be in the way.
Now this is where what I do is I'll go and I'll go past center now and start to do this side of it. I go as far as I can get. Like I say, I only do, I'm only doing it all like as much as I can here because it's being held in the chuck versus the jam chuck. It's just easier. And that's why I keep doing this way. I could have flipped this around and done the other half in the, inside the jam with the top in the jam chuck and it would be fine. But I like to try to, try to, you know, kind of like do as much as I can when I know it's held in something really, really strong. And um, the only problem is this is kind of left hand turning on this side of it, so. That's always a little bit trickier. That's pretty close. Still got a little bit on one side here to do. This is one where it's not running maybe quite as true in this chuck as it was or would be in a jam chuck because it's, it's got a line on one side and not on the other side. So you know it's not quite centered, and that's probably just because of how the, the chuck is grabbing onto it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I live with that. I don't let that worry me too much. But I do have to take the line off to make sure it's not on both sides. At this point, what I like to do is I like to put two decorative marks on it, one on either side of the joint, just so that that line in the middle isn't, isn't the only thing. I also kind of put a groove, a little bit of a V right at the center line so that they match. And now I would sand that whole thing in this orientation. This is the other reason why doing three quarters of the sphere uh, when it's in the chuck is nicer because I can, I can get both of those grooves matched up right here in this orientation. And uh, we'd go ahead and get that thing sanded. Oh yeah, that one's too tight. <laughs> He's gonna be fun to try to get out off. But it makes doing the next step really, really easy. How are we doing on time? We're good. All right. Now I put that jam chuck back on there. Let's see how she. Ah. put that jam chuck in and out of that chuck twice without, without doing that, so I better. Huh? After every time you take it out of the chuck, you generally have to. Yeah, cut. yeah, because you, you just don't know unless you know, if I had this thing face plated or something that I knew that it, 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 it wouldn't be moving, but every time I put this in the chuck, I've got it basically where it was before, but it's always, you know, and, and, the, and the sphere won't be perfect unless you, so it, yeah, it always gets just one little pass in it. So I'm, I'm shortening the face of it now because it's too big. And I don't know that it's deep enough either.
Almost positive it's not deep enough. We'll get a line, and I've got three lines I can use for that. This one I will tape. There is a, uh, I think it was put on your website, but th on my website there's a handout for, for these demos. So if you go to armadillowoodworks.com and go to the demo section, find the sphere demo. Uh, there's two handouts, one for just doing the basic sphere, and then there's a second handout for doing the sphere boxes that you'll find out there. just for added support. Don't really need it, but I'm going to use it. Should have left that so I could finish this box at home. Now that I took that tenon off, it makes it virtually impossible to finish the box. Usually I'm a slightly more aggressive in my own shop. So it typically doesn't take quite this amount of time. So do you have your lid jacked up one ways because it's all over? I've got the tall setup on a one way. 48 inch legs, I think is what they call them. So my, le my legs don't adjust, but they are the tallest that one way, that one way makes. So I got a half and half box now. 
<laughs> but uh, what, I, what I would have done, if I did have it that tight, uh, before I had um, finished the bottom part, I would have sanded this just a little bit. Or you can sand the top either, either way. Um, uh, before I would have taken the top off after I'd hollowed it out, I would have sanded the inside, I would have finished the inside, everything would have been done before that would have come out and worked on the other half of it. So that, that all would be, be done because there's no way to go back to the inside and, and do a finish. I do things like this, I'll finish on the lathe. So um, that all has to be done while it was still in, in that orientation in, in the original when I was doing the hollowing part. So right after the hollowing was done, sand it. What kind of finish? Uh, on something like this, it, I just would use deft lacquer. Okay. Just deft lacquer on the lathe real quick, uh, a little bit of wax on it, on the lathe then too. At the, at the end, after I'd, after I'd um, you know, so this would be all sanded at this point, but there'd be no finish on it. I would, I would wipe on deft on, off the lathe on this, and then I would buff them. Okay. So the, they'll be super shiny uh, off the lathe. Uh, as a result, which is another reason why that has to fit much looser than that because their fingers are going to be slipping. So you certainly don't want anybody to have to pick up a knife to pry it apart um, on there. Um, but that's why I do these. I also have these. Uh, um, I make these. I make these little dishes or the rings uh, as uh, as display display features for them. Uh, so that it can sit there and you can just take the box off. Um, and now that you know how to make the torus vase, you kind of know how to make these guys. There's just small versions of those torus vases, essentially. Um, although, I actually hold these in the, in the chuck when I do the second side. So, I make these small enough so that they'll fit inside the chuck jaws because they need to be done fast. Um, I don't add a whole lot. Even th these these can have more time in them than this, because th there's so much extra work to make one of these guys. But this is what sells. So I, you know, it's that's why I kind of went to making these guys because I can make these guys ten times faster than you can make one of these. So they serve the same purpose. They're just not hollow. Great question, uh, one big box, one. About fifty. So they're cheap. I mean, a lot of my stuff is real inexpensive. Um, and uh, that's just what my market can sustain. It's not what I would like to get for them. <laughs> you know, I mean, especially when you, especially if I was just this, this wouldn't be so bad because there's less than an hour's worth of work on this, on this guy typically. But this will add in more, you know, this will add in, you know, another 15 minutes at least on one of these. If not 20 to 30, you know, there could be 30 minutes on these depending on how much I screw them up. So, you know, it's, that, that's why I don't like to make, I don't make these unless um, the clocks go for more money. So uh, those I can get a little bit more and I'll usually do the rings for the clocks. But for, for just for a sphere stand or the box stand, I might, I might just do kind of the, the half version that doesn't go all the way through because I can crank those out real easy. You can, you can do all of this in one setting, part them off and there they're quick, yeah. So they, they they serve the same purpose, and I don't add hardly any cost to the whole to the whole thing on them. Um, you know. Where do you get the clocks? Uh, clock kit, clockkit.com, um, and they have so many different varieties. You know, um, you you choose whatever. Kind of they're based on the size. Although um, uh, they have a the ones that I've used that I like the most don't have a rubber ring around them. They fit with, they have kind of four spring clips on them. And they just fit in, and they fit in perfectly to a 1 and 7 eighths inch drill. The ones with a rubber ring around them that holds them in, it's 1 and 7 eighths plus a fraction. So you have to go back in then and make another cut and... Everything like that just slow, you know, when you're doing, doing things like I do from a production standpoint, that little step is a step that I don't want to take. Um, but uh, I, I like some of the clock kit stuff. Some of the clock kit stuff is really, really cheap. And um, I've had stems break off on the clocks very, very easily. So sometimes you get what you pay for, but they've generally they've been real good um, for me. Are there any other questions on this or anything else that 
you might have seen on the website or anything. All right. <laughs> <laughs>